In this demo video, I'm going to be talking about plaster. I will be covering the proper uh, ratios for mixing your plaster, um, and then also helping you to identify the different stages that plaster goes through, uh, which are important to understand and identify for the different purposes or applications that you might need or want your plaster in. So in this demo, what I will be doing is uh, making two different uh, objects, and these are just to sort of give you a basic understanding of what you could do at that stage. And once you have that foundation, then you can make more sort of complex uh, objects using the same material, the same mixing methods, just identifying the plaster at different stages. So I'll be making a solid volume. This was just cast in a uh, milk container. And then a little bit of carving was done into it to just sort of show you how you can then alter the shape or the form. Um, so that was pouring the plaster into a form. Uh, you can also use plaster in a sort of method that's called like frosting, where you build it up uh, in its kind of plasticky stages. So this particular shape is either could be utilized maybe to carve into if you wanted to do some uh, reductive carving into a block of plaster. Um, it also could be used as a mold in itself. Uh, you could press clay into here, you could use this for slip or cast other materials uh, into this as well. Once you understand the basics of plaster and you're like, this is when I could pour it, this is when I could sort of build up with it, you can then make more complex shapes. Um, so you can make like a two-part mold for slip casting. You could learn how to make an alginate mold and then cast that with plaster um, as well. So there's lots of different things that you can do. And this video is just serving as that very basic foundation. Some things to listen for as I'm going through the video where I'm talking about the different stages the plaster is going through is there's a liquid stage, a thixotropic stage, a plastic stage, and then it starts going into its hardening cycle before it finally goes into its heat cycle. So listen for those key terms throughout the video. The other thing that's important to note is that I'm using the USG brand pottery plaster number one, and the mixing ratios for this are three parts plaster by weight to one part water by volume. So if I have three pounds of plaster, I will want one quart of water. Those ratios can go up if you need more volume or down if you need less volume. The temperature of the water is also important. So 70 degrees Fahrenheit is the ideal temperature for the water. If you have hotter water or warmer water, the setting times are going to be much quicker. If you use colder water, it's going to be a lot more sort of mixing time before the plaster starts going through its different stages. So with that in mind, let's get started. The first thing that you'll want to do is weigh out your plaster. So I have a bucket on a digital scale, which will give me a nice accurate weight of my plaster. I'm also using a smaller container to scoop it out of my bag and I'm careful not to let it create a big dusty mess as I'm weighing out my material. It's not a bad idea to wear a KN95 respirator when you're working with dry ingredients. I have to use two buckets to get the amount of plaster that I need, so I'm just going to continue to scoop that in until I get my required weight. You'll want to make sure that you are also storing your plaster properly by keeping it in a sealed bag or a nice airtight container. So here I have two quarts of water, again it is 70 degrees, and I need six pounds of plaster for my two quarts of water. I've divided that plaster between two different containers. One other important thing to know is that the bucket you use to mix your plaster in cannot be more than half full of water. If the volume you need of water fills more than half of your bucket, you're going to need a bigger bucket. Otherwise, you won't have enough room to add all of your plaster and properly mix it. So next, I'm going to start adding my plaster to my water. You always want to add plaster to water and you wanna do it slowly, not just dumping it all in at once. So this process of adding six pounds of plaster should take you anywhere from two to five minutes. Again, notice how I'm sprinkling it around the edges. I'm breaking it up in my hand as I sprinkle. 
I'm working to evenly distribute it. And I'm starting to look to see if there's any areas where plaster is kind of floating on the surface and then avoiding that area as I continue to add more plaster. If you look at the timer, you'll see it's about the five minute mark and I'm just sprinkling in the last of the plaster. And I've jumped ahead uh, to kind of show you a little bit of the soaking period, which is about one to three minutes, although it can be longer if needed, where you're making sure that all the dry plaster on the top is slowly getting absorbed by the water below. So the white has now turned to this creamy, consistent color, and it also looks kind of like a dry riverbed. This is a great time to begin mixing. When mixing large batches of plaster, it can be helpful to use a drill with a mixing paddle attachment for mixing paint or plaster. You can also use a smaller handheld electric mixer for smaller batches. It's also just fine to use your hands for these smaller batches like I am here. So I'm showing you that what I'm doing under the surface of the plaster is breaking up any clumps and working to get a nice kind of creamy consistency with the plaster. Make sure that you are also actively mixing your plaster, as you can see here. That will help make a nice strong batch of plaster. And as you're mixing, you can look to see how the plaster is coating your hand. That will help you identify the different stages that the plaster is going through. If you had a mold with lots of fine detail, you would want to pour the plaster at this stage while it's still nice and liquidy and sort of runny and able to pick up those little details. Since I'm casting a solid volume, I can continue to mix this just a little bit longer till it gets right up into that liquid stage in which the plaster is a little bit creamy. You'll see that when I drag my finger across the surface, it doesn't leave a mark in the plaster, and that's a good sign for when we are pouring it into a form. I'm going to quickly tap the bucket to bring any air bubbles to the surface. And then I'm going to pop those along the edge of the surface of the plaster. Once you're ready to pour, you do want to move fairly fast. So here I've got the plaster bucket. I'm lifting it. I'm kind of making a funnel with it and I've poured it into my milk container. And I'm also going to tap that. You can see bubbles are rising to the surface. So next I'm going to show you frosting a mold or applying plaster without a retaining wall around it. The plaster is nearing the end of the liquid stage as, at this point. And if I had um, a form underneath that had a lot of detail, again, I would have wanted to have applied a layer of the plaster onto the surface of this form before it got to the end of the liquid stage to help me pick up those details. My clay shape below is pretty simple and so I was able to capture all of the detail I needed with the plaster at this stage. But you can also gently blow on the plaster after you apply your first coat to make sure that it's picked up all of the detail. After you get on your first coat, you're likely going to need to Mix your plaster for a little while longer in order to have it thicken up so it doesn't just totally flow off of your piece. So I've mixed it a little longer. The plaster is less fluid now. You can see that it's much thicker and that when I apply it to the form, it doesn't just ooze off onto the table. It can be easy to lose track of your form below and so it's not a bad idea to use your finger or a wooden tool to measure the thickness of your plaster. You might also recall I have some blue tape on the board that is helping me to know how far out I wanted the plaster to go. And so I can use that to also help me as a guide so I don't make my mold too thick in some areas or thin in other areas. You can see that the plaster has now entered the thixotropic stage where it holds its shape in my hand, but if I wiggle it back and forth, it softens and kind of oozes back out. So this is a good stage to work with the plaster and build with it. It also leads very quickly into the plastic stage. Once you are at this stage, it is near the end of your working time with the plaster. So you'll need to work fast to finish things up. 
I've applied all the plaster that I need to apply. It is also beyond the plastic state. And so this is a good time to do a little bit of cleanup by trimming away some excess plaster along the edges uh, and also smoothing out the surface. The plaster has clearly made its way into the hardening cycle at this point. You can identify that by the plaster cracking on my hands. It also doesn't get fluid when I shake it, and when I squeeze it, it cracks. This is a great time to begin cleaning your bucket and your tools. Please note you should never put plaster down your sink drain. Begin your cleanup by trying to get as much plaster off of your hands and your tools. Uh, by using just a small amount of water and some newspaper or some paper towels. I have a rinse bucket and I'm using that to get my water from and to do a more thorough cleaning. You can see I'm using that to get my tools pretty clean at this point as well. I can continue to use that rinse water to clean my bucket and my remaining tools and I shouldn't have to use my sink at all. Clean up any remaining messes that you have and let's get ready to check on our plaster. If we do another time check, you will see that I'm about 30 minutes into this process, which is on average when the plaster starts to enter into the heat cycle. You'll notice that the plaster will feel warm to the touch and once it starts cooling, that's when it's ready to work with. The edge of my block was still soft, so this is a good time to do a little extra cleanup. At this point, the plaster has cooled, the edges aren't as soft, and so I can go ahead and start opening that form. You can see that the plaster takes on all the details of the form that it was cast into. Next, you'll see that I'm using a sure form or a rasp, which is kind of like a cheese grater, to do a little bit of a cleanup on the outside of the mold. These tools can be found in the hardware store in the tool section or in their drywall section. If they start to get full, you can just pop off the top, clean it out, and then put it back on and continue to clean up your surface. Being careful to smooth out the surface in the plastic stage can help with some of this extra cleanup later. I'm now showing you how the sure form can be used to shape your block of plaster if you had planned to carve into it. Plaster is very easy to shape once it has cooled down from the hardening cycle. This is a great time to do any large blocking moves that you might need with your plaster. Next, we will flip over the mold and remove the clay that is on the interior. You can start by carefully using a loop tool to take out larger sections of clay, but you wanna be very careful not to cut into the interior of the plaster, especially if you plan on using that as a mold. So eventually I turn to using a wooden tool and taking out smaller quantities of clay. Once you get the clay thin enough, you should be able to just carefully peel and pry it away from the surface. Be patient with this process, it will eventually come free. This is a water-based clay and it can be reused for other mold making purposes. Remove any plaster chunks and then store it in a plastic bag for later use. A green Scotch-Brite scrubby can be good for cleaning up fine detail on the interior of the mold. Once again, the sure form can do a good job cleaning up that outer edge. I used my fingers as tools of measurement to help me create a uniform thickness around the edge of the mold and the interior cavity. Continue to look over your mold and smooth out any areas that might need to be addressed. Finally, use the Scotch-Brite scrubby to smooth the top surface of your mold. You can see on the right, it's nice and smooth and I'll have a little bit more work to do on the top left. One final scrub on the exterior is a great idea, especially if you're going to be using this for mold making or slip casting. Do one final cleaning of the mold with a sponge and some water. You'll need to let this dry before you use it as a mold for mold making or slip casting. This plaster is still holding quite a bit of moisture, so don't store this on top of a wooden surface.
It's time to enter the final cleaning phase. Scrape away any excess plaster, toss your newspapers, throw excess plaster into the garbage, and wipe down your work surfaces. You'll also want to be sure to clean the plaster off of any metal tools or they will rust. A wire bristle brush works really great for cleaning your metal tools. You can see that I'm once again using my water rinse bucket. You can see as I gather up this newsprint that I also had a layer of plastic underneath my work surface the entire time. Just like plaster, the water that you used in your rinse bucket should also not go down the drain. Let the heavy particles settle to the bottom overnight. The next day you can pour the clear water into the grass outside, but save the sludge that's at the bottom of the bucket. This can either be left to dry on its own, or you could wipe out the excess with some paper towels and toss them. One final rinse and your bucket is clean. You should now feel more confident about working with plaster and identifying the different working stages of it. Of course, the more you work with a material, the more familiar you will become with its working properties and you will have more successes than failures. So if something goes wrong, re-review your notes and give it another try.